Howie, welcome to the mother of all talk shows. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, now, you say it's good to be here, but you lambasted Dr. Jill Stein for her uh, relationship with RT, and yet you contacted us to be on this show this evening. An apparent contradiction. Clear it up, if you will. I didn't lambast her for going on RT. I've been on at least half a dozen times in the course of this campaign. So I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, I'm referring to a much watched video in which you lambasted uh, Dr. Jill uh, for going to an RT event in Moscow. I was also at it. Yeah, I thought that uh, what she had to say, which was about international policy, would be ignored. And, uh, you know, that's what happened. They took a picture of her and it was broadcast all over the world like she was sitting there with Putin and uh, General Flynn. And in fact, Putin just sat down at the table for a minute. She didn't really interact with him. So, you know, I just I thought that wasn't probably the best thing to do in the course of the campaign. It'd be, fair, it'd be fair to say, though, you have a, a rather poor view uh, of President Putin and of uh, today's Russia. Yeah, but I don't buy into the democratic narrative that because whatever they did in the election means that we should escalate the Cold War with Russia or that we should censor the Internet or that it excuses Hillary Clinton for losing uh, the 2016 election. That was the Electoral College, not Russia that did that. So I'm not in that camp. But you do think that Russia was a malign actor in the 2016 uh, election because I've seen you say so. Yeah, that's what intelligence services do. The United States does it too. Uh, you know, it's no big surprise. Well, somebody else that you lambasted in the same interview was Julian Assange. Uh, you, uh, you weren't uh, exactly supportive uh, of uh, Julian Assange. Explain why. Well, I'm supportive of the U.S. dropping the charges against him and him being freed. And I've been clear about that from the beginning. I did say that I thought him uh, direct messaging with Donald Trump Jr. during that campaign. I didn't like that. You know, the Trumps represent the most racist reactionary forces in this country. And what about the Syrian president? You were uh, equally scathing uh, about him. Uh, just explain uh, why you take that view, given that uh, the Syrian government is trying to fight off, with Russia's help, uh, some of the worst head-chopping, throat-cutting fanatics to be found anywhere on the globe. Well, those people should be defeated, the jihadis. There was also an uprising of people demanding bread and freedom nonviolently, and Assad was repressive toward them. That's my criticism of Assad. But you want them to win the war? The, 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 the jihadis should be defeated, yes. By him? Well, yeah, he's fighting them, and uh, the Russians are helping him. So, yeah, okay, I'm glad we've uh, cleared that up, if we have uh, cleared it up. Uh, let's talk about the uh, main policy planks uh, of your campaign, Howie, and how close you are uh, to getting the, the gig, as it were, as the Green Party nominee. Well, to the latter question, I think we're about 90% of the way to a first uh, round uh, win in the Green Party convention on July 11th, and we expect to get over the top uh, by the end of this coming week. In terms of my policy platform, I've been framing it around three life or death issues, and now we have a fourth, the coronavirus crisis, and I'll talk about that first. The United States has 4% of the world's population and 30% of the COVID-19 deaths because both governing parties in this country are presiding over a failed state. They can't figure out how to test people, trace the contacts, and quarantine those infected, like most organized countries around the world are doing, and have been able to successfully uh, suppress the virus to a great extent. So that's number one. Neither party is putting forward a program. Trump is incompetent and really indifferent, and Biden has been invisible, and when he pops his head up, he's incoherent. 
He doesn't make clear demands about what we need to do now. So that's one. Second life or death issue is the climate meltdown. And I've been calling since 2010, I was the first candidate in the United States to call for a Green New Deal to transform all our productive systems to zero to negative greenhouse gas emissions on 100% clean energy by 2030. So we have an eco-socialist Green New Deal that will do a lot of this through the public sector, a public energy system, public transportation system, and uh, manufacturing green uh, or manufacturing green uh, manufacturing equipment so that we can transform our productive systems. Second issue is inequality or the third issue, third life or death issue. Working class life expectancies in this country are declining. And that's inexcusable. So we call for an economic bill of rights. So everybody has the right to a living wage job, an income above poverty, affordable housing, comprehensive health care, lifelong tuition-free public education, and a secure retirement. And then the last issue that's life or death that none of the presidential candidates in this country are talking about is this new nuclear arms race. We're just about to see the last bilateral treaty between the United States and Russia on nuclear arms, the strategic arms treaty, expire next February 5th, and there are no negotiations going on. So what I'm calling for is uh, tension-reducing initiatives, cut the military budget by 75 percent, withdraw U.S. troops from these seven shooting wars and all the over 100 countries where special operations uh, take action every year uh, from the foreign, eight, over 800 foreign military bases, pledge no first use of nuclear weapons, disarm to a minimum credible deterrent, and then go to the other nuclear powers and say, we want complete and nuclear, uh, mutual nuclear disarmament. And we'll have the support of the 122 nations that agreed to the text on a treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons three years ago. So that's a huge issue that we want to make a top campaign issue. So those, that's the core of my platform and what I'm running on. Well, it's uh, powerful for sure. Uh, Howie, wh where do you start maybe this all occurred after your platform was drawn up, but you are obviously going to have to deal with it. Uh, what about the, the conduct of the police in the United States? Everyone all around the world is, uh, can hardly turn on their phones uh, without seeing another video of another police officer uh, murdering another uh, black man. Uh, where's, what's your stand on all of that? Well, I think just like the COVID-19 crisis revealed that this country is a failed state for everybody, uh, what's been exposed since the George Floyd lynching is that we've had a pandemic of racism for centuries and that this country's always been a failed state for black America. So what we're calling for is obviously what they call defunding the police. Stop having the police harass uh, low-income people, people of color, for non-criminal offenses, low-level offenses, just to fill the mass incarceration system and transfer those funds uh, to people that can deal with problems like homelessness. Homeless people need a home, not a cop coming and push them along or arrest them for vagrancy. Uh, people with mental health crises or drug addiction need medical treatment, not a police officer. So that's one thing. And the other thing we're talking about is community control of the police. We need elected police commissions with the power to hire and fire the police chief to investigate and discipline officer misconduct and to negotiate contracts with the police unions, which tend to have special provisions in their contract, contracts, which protect officers from accountability. And then the other thing we're calling for is automatic federal investigation and prosecution when the police violate the civil rights of a person, including injury and death. And we call it the Johnny Gamage Law, named after a guy from the neighborhood I'm sitting in named Johnny Gamage, who was suffocated uh, to death by police in Pittsburgh suburbs in 1995 when he was visiting his cousin, also from this neighborhood, who was playing football for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we need the, the local district attorneys and even the state attorneys general are too close to the local police. They're not distant enough to do a real independent investigation. So we want uh, the Department of Justice to do that. Now, of course, we need somebody other than Bill Barr in charge of the Department of Justice for that to work.
Now, finally, and I'm grateful for your time, uh, Howie, and your, your busy schedule. Uh, many people think, I, I'm one of them, I should tell you, uh, that the former governor, Jesse Ventura, would be, a, if you like, a more high-profile uh, candidate for the Green Party. And I know he's in the race, which, uh, by your uh, description, is more or less over. Uh, what, what would you say to uh, supporters of uh, Governor Jesse, uh, who think he'd be a good candidate to run? Well, he's not running, and he has said he's going to support the Green Party, so I would urge them uh, to get on board because we have a real opportunity with the Green Party here with this miserable choice between Trump and Biden to have a real impact and to advance our platform, and we get a strong vote in November, and that gives us leverage in the political process going forward. I mean, I've experienced that. I got 5% running against Governor Cuomo in 2014 when he was trying to run up the vote to get ready to run for president. And he couldn't take us for granted. And he had to adapt to what we were demanding. So he accepted three demands he had never supported before. A ban on fracking, a $15 minimum wage, and paid family leave. So we don't have to win the office to have a big impact. And that's what we aim to do as we go through this election.